Hello and welcome to Farm Talks. My name is Indra Shekhar Singh and today we are going to be talking about how these erratic rainfalls, these heavy erratic rainfalls are affecting India's food security and agriculture. Now it, it doesn't take many many tomatoes for you to realize that the tomato prices have skyrocketed. There is hyperinflation in the market to the point where tomato prices are up by 445%. Today, if you go out in the market, whether you're living in Delhi, Bombay, Lucknow, Allahabad, or Hyderabad, no matter where you are, you are paying, you're bleeding from your pocket for paying for tomatoes. Tomatoes has become more expensive than petrol in this country. In Delhi today, I have bought tomatoes for 250 rupees a kg, while the petrol prices are only 97. So this will give you a figure of what is happening with Indian agriculture. But tomatoes are not alone. When I talk about other vegetables, whether it's loki, tori, karela, everything is skyrocketing. When we talk about ginger, which most of us use are onions, we see that prices of onion have doubled in Delhi. And ginger, which is adrak, is hitting about 300 to 350 rupees in the city. So what happens to the common man? What happens to the people who cannot afford to pay so much? The answer is they go hungry. Their children get malnourished. And why? So let's start talking about the whys. Now, of course, the trigger event for all of this has been the erratic rainfall. Usually, India gets rainfall in early July, where, when all the farmers are getting ready, they're ready for sowing, and the traditional Kharif season begins all over the country. But this year, due to the cyclone Bipar Joy, which was one of the longest living cyclones on the sea. And what, that, what, what I mean by that is that this, mount, this cyclone survived in the Arabian seas for more than, more than a week. This has never been seen before. And when this cyclone made landfall in Gujarat, western uh, Rajasthan, and moving further up to Delhi and Himachal, it caused a wave of destruction a wave of destruction that could not have been predicted by even the most advanced AI forecasting systems. Our farmers were not ready. Our country was not ready. And as a result, we still can see today how Uttarakhand is being lashed by these rains. We see Himachal, where roads, where farms, where people have just been, you know, have been decimated because of these flash floods and these erratic rainfall. So of course, the rainfall came and hit the country when the farmers were not expecting it. Usually, India has a very clear-cut understanding when, where tomatoes are grown, even if it's off-season. Places in southern India and also the coastal India used to provide tomatoes for this season for the rest of India. Some of the other places in North India, like Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Jammu and Kashmir, also provided off-season tomatoes and other vegetables. But because of the erratic rain, all that has been destroyed. Now, as this crazy weather only grows, the rainfall increases in dif different parts, destroying biodiversity, destroying our farms, and at most, destroying our agrarian sowing seasons. We do not know, is, it this, is this the monsoon? Is this, is this all the rain we are going to get? We don't know that yet. And in the future, there is no way of predicting how the monsoon will last. Will the Kharif sowing be affected? We cannot tell right now. But this also, this erratic weather brings about another important question. What happened to the government's Operation Greens? What happened to the TOPS program which the government started a couple of years ago? There were special guarantees given that through this program there will be fret subsidies and development of infrastructure for tomato, onion and potatoes. Because these three are the staples of this country. There is hardly any house in, the, in this whole country who doesn't or who don't use these three things. They use one of these three things for sure in one, in every or, or every second meal. So that's how important these three things are. These three agriculture crops are to us and yet India is reeling. Right now we can send vehicles to the moon, we can send spaceships to the moon, but we cannot figure out our tomato problem. So back to the government scheme. The government scheme has failed, the Operation Greens has failed miserably, and there is no infrastructure, there is no nothing to curtail this. And while now the discontent is reaching Indian cities and Indian consumers are now crying 
and whining about prices, there was a time not long ago, only at the end of the last rubby season, when the Indian farmers were throwing potatoes, were throwing vegetables on the street in protest. Where were the schemes then? Why didn't the schemes come out and take these extra excessive crops, take the tomatoes, conserve them properly, preserve them, so that they could be released in the time of need? India is suffering from the, some of the worst climatic transitions. And what I mean by that is agricultural seasons in India are changing. And why am I saying this? If you just look at the data from the past two years and from the past five years, last two years, we've seen the wheat crop being affected by either heat waves or untimely rain. We've seen last year again that how central India was bashed by rains. The wheat crop again in central, central India did not do really well. In fact, in Madhya Pradesh, there were reports of blackening of the wheat crop. Last year too, there were major agricultural disruptions because of erratic climate. Now, where is all this going to go? Keep in mind that next year is election year. And still 80 crore people in this country depend on government rations for their daily needs. If India loses because of the rain and India loses a good Kharif season, not only will we see a hyperinflation in food, but, a, but it will no longer also be an economic problem. It will be a real civil problem where people will not have enough to eat and India as a country will not have enough resources to import the things that it needs. We are about the erratic weather only spells doom for the coming seasons and doom for food security, doom for rural health and the health of people who are most vulnerable. Whether we agree with the food hunger index or not, but with this rain, we are going to go much down on that index. Let me assure you that. Still, no concrete steps. And what is the government's solution? The government very, very promising, promisingly announces that there's going to be a grand tomato challenge. Now, is this a PR stunt or a slap on the hungry consumer's face? Because now the problem is at its peak and yet we are still engaged in PR stunts. I hope to God that it is not a PR stunt and actually some solutions come out of it. But till the time I am paying and you are paying and all of us are paying over 200 rupees for our tomatoes, that solution is very, very far. My concerns at this stage are for the paddy crop. My concerns at this stage is for the pulses crop for onions and other vegetables that are going to be sowed in this Kharif season. If all of them fail, there is a very high probability that India could have a very dire food situation. The most affected will of course be the underprivileged population and people who don't have enough money. So we've discussed enough problems and what is wrong with the Indian agriculture. Of course the weather and then the failure of government schemes and the inability of the Indian management and bureaucracy and the government to supply staple foods to the common people. But let's talk about solutions now. First of all, the first solution in this, in this whole parameter should be to inspect the government schemes. What happened with uh, Operation Greens? What happened with the top program? What are the gaps? Who are the people responsible? The country should know. The second solution that we must consider is having village level cold storages. We must create infrastructure and facilities where people and farmers, instead of throwing their vegetables on the fields in protest, on the roads in protest, actually can conserve it, preserve them. Now, one way to preserve their vegetables is to dry them. Why don't we, instead of putting, also I understand that cold storages are expensive and some of you are thinking, where would we find the electricity in the rural villages for the cold storages? Well, another alternative is to have solar dryers and cottage level processing plants in all villages or at least at the block level. So people, and especially tomato farmers, can actually go and sun dry their tomatoes using solar technology or solar dryers. This solar, let me remind people, that in India there has been a very strong and a very old tradition of using dried vegetables in off-season years. Not only does it re reduce the carbon footprint, but also provides enough options for farmers to cut their post-harvest losses. There is also a big demand for sun-dried tomatoes in the export world and also this can be consumed directly by the food processing industry. 
the final solution at this point is to also create a special MSP and a special agency within the government that is only taking care of the tomato, onion and potato program. This agency needs to announce special MSP-like regime for the farmers backed by quotas so that the farmers don't overgrow and there are no oversurpluses in the market. There needs to be an MSP linked with quotas and backed by government procurement. And in the years when all this is not happening, the government and this agency should look for countries around India as an export hub for getting these top, top vegetables, tomato, onion and potatoes and looking for foreign markets for these commodities. I think if we do not establish direct links and incentivize our farmers backed by storage facilities, quotas and a government procurement, India is going to be battling with the tomato problem not only this year but for many years in the future. Thank you for watching our program. We once again urge you to make your own decisions, search at your own facts, talk to your own farmers and know the reality on the ground. This show is over, ladies and gentlemen, but The Wire is not going anywhere and we will have more programs for you very soon. If you have, and if you have a suggestion to, to give us and to talk about solving the tomato mess or the vegetable mess, don't forget to comment on our YouTube channel or tweet on our Twitter page. Thank you very much. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.